Welcome to Grey Primer, a weekly show that's mostly about miniatures. My name is Nick, I'm your host, and I'm continuing the very special Orc March on Grey Primer with the Orc Mech Gun. The only problem with running a month just dedicated to orcs is that at some point it has to end. That's not for a few weeks yet, we got some great content coming up still. And today it's the turn of the orc mech gun. It says orc mech gun, but all I see are fantastic grots here. Grots are just the funniest creatures. The only thing funnier than a grot, or, well it's pretty much two grots. And the only thing that's funnier than two grots is two grots with like snotlings on their backs. With reins through their mouths and like whipping them and... Is that even a thing? Can you race grots? Can snarl? I feel like I've invented a new game. It's not a good game, but it's new. So you'd have like champion grots that would be from prime stock. They'd be really well trained snarlings that are ultra light. You'd have orc coaches doing all the things that coaches do. And huh, it's my idea. Okay, Warhammer. So I may have got a little off track there, but I'm going to pull it back now. I'm going to go get this Grot mech gun unboxed and see how cute these little green spanners actually are in the flesh. Back soon. Okay, so here is the wonderful Grot mech gun. Yeah. Look how awesome this cover is. Look how cool these guys are. I just dig it so much. And all lined up in all their glory on the edge of the box there. That's a nice touch. And then just some add details of the gun. Lots of cool angles. Lots of nice close-up shots on those. It's fantastic paint jobs. And, oh, that's one-to-one -one scale. Okay, so this is not the biggest thing in the universe. But I think it's decent enough value with these five grots in there. So let's get this unboxed. See what it looks like. Okay, lots of tiny bases, little 25 mil bases there. Pop this out of the way. And then into the instructions, black and white instruction book. But we have multiple variant builds here. We got the mech gun, the custom mega cannon, the smasher gun, the tractor cannon, and the bubble chucka. This is gonna be a tough one to call. I have no idea what direction I'm going to go. Uh, I imagine this manual is multi-page just because there are so many variants there. Uh, gets through the grots nice and quick at the beginning. Gretchens? I thought these were called grots. I don't know. What's the, Are they different? Somebody will tell me in the comments anyway. Somebody's probably been screaming it at their TV this whole time. Anyway. Not the uh, Games Workshop instruction manuals that we've become accustomed to. There's a, there's a lot more of an exploded diagram kind of look. Um, so that's interesting. And then multiple images of different angles to look at it from. I'm sure it'll be fine once I go through it with the sprues in front of me. Uh, but right now it's not the most intuitive looking manual. But I'm still looking forward to getting into it. Here we have the, the two sprues that make up all the parts. And it looks like some really nice meaty chunky details here like these big panels, this weapon system here. And lots of great detail, lots of great sculpted detail throughout. I don't think this one's going to be too dull to look at when it's built. I think there's going to be lots of visual interest there. I'm going to take it away now, get it all built up, and I'll be right back with one of these four variants. So this turned out a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be, but I'm not actually disappointed. It scaled really well to these little Gretchens or Grots or whatever they're called. I still just don't know why it's called an Orc Mech Gun. It's way too small for Orcs to be able to fit onto this thing. But anyway, let's talk about the little guys first because there's just so much character in these and I just loved putting them together. They they go together incredibly simply. There's there's not a huge amount of complexity to them. You know, this one's probably the most parts. I think there were four parts with the two separate weapons, the head and the body. But even with that, it's just goes together nice and simple. And he even has a great selection of tools around his belt there you can see 
wrenches and all sorts of things, spanners and the like. That's, that's a great level of detail. The next one is, uh, yeah, he's got a few tools there as well, but he's shouting. I'm not sure that that's going to be pleasant, whatever's coming out of this little creature's mouth. Knowing these guys, this is going to be something fairly repulsive. Next one looks like he's about to hit a home run, uh, pointing off into the, the outfield. But I love the welding mask detail. I like this length of cable with sort of frayed ends to it. Um, these creatures are, are mostly naked. They don't have a huge amount of clothing. So hopefully this one who's welding is just very careful when the sparks are flying. This next one looks like he's laboring, carrying this heavy power pack. You can see the strain in his face there. He's got a grenade here. Lovely little details as well. There's actually a set of dog tags just around his neck. And I do like the pose. You can get the feel that he's in a hurry, but this is heavy. Uh, love that guy as well. Love all these little guys. They're so cool. And then this last one has got a reel of... It's either fuel hose or cabling or something like that. But he's rocking these amazing 1980s sunglasses. He just is bringing it. Um, some cool orc iconography on his uh, body there. And then we're into the actual orc mech gun. I went with the bubble chucker. And I went with the bubble chucker because I just liked the look of it. It came down to that. I wasn't a huge fan of the more complex looking ones let me just grab the just grab the box here and show you the other ones yeah it just felt too fiddly for me at the front this one you can see the other design here another kind of sci-fi looking thing and this one felt like a cap or something was on it it was weird it just felt a little strange looking so for me the bubble chuck it made absolute sense when you build it it does retain elevation here so You've got that. You could, of course, glue it in place if you want, but I figured what was the harm. Beautifully detailed throughout. I love this computer terminal at the back. You could get a really cool glow effect on that if you wanted to paint it that way. More sort of controls here. Looks like some kind of equalizer. I guess with the size of your bubbles. <laughs> and then this little dude here with his binoculars looking through the gap. He's just absolutely adorable. I think you probably want to paint him before you glue him in place. And like I've said before, if you make a mistake like this, if you realize something like that late on, you can always just put a little bit of thin cement underneath where the contact points here are the feet and just wobble them until he releases. And then you can uh, tidy up the little glue point, uh, get him painted, and then re-glue him later on. So it's not the end of the world. I love these pieces of armor plate, incredibly orc-like, the designs, the, the teeth at the front here. I do like the way they've designed the tire here to look flat where it's sitting against the ground, uh, rather than being completely round all the way. Uh, it just gives that a little bit of realism. But some beautiful sculpted designs throughout this. And yeah, fun to look at, fun to build. Uh, <laughs> the little guys, absolutely the highlight. I really have no negatives to say about this kit at all. It looks great. I had fun putting it together. Uh, every time I look at it, I see some other little cool little detail that I missed the first time. And yeah, it's uh, highly recommended. And for now, please like, share, and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. Throw a comment down below and I'll make sure I respond to it. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care and bye-bye.